scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It seems as though the word of God is not producing the kind of result that they expect and it's important that at a miracle service like this we really understand how god works that's why i'm asking that please we pay attention those following online those following around do not allow the devil distract you every time the word of god is about to come the bible tells us very clearly that when the seed is sown satan himself will come and pick that seed Praise the Lord. Satan has never been afraid of the word of God. Satan is afraid of what the word of God can do when it is understood and it is mixed with faith. Praise the Lord. And so I want to share a few things um, very briefly. And I'd like us to be very sensitive. The power of God is here. But our spiritual understanding is important. Please, you must understand that God is not a herbalist. God is not a magician. There is an exact spiritual technology that brings the things that we desire as far as God is concerned. Um, the word of God defines the boundaries of his commitment to our lives. You have to know this. God is not committed under any or every condition. No. There are conditions that must be met to guarantee his commitment. It is true that God is love, but he is bound by the coordinates of his word. That means if we attempt to receive anything from God outside of the jurisdiction of his word, there is a guarantee that we will not receive it. Hallelujah. So there are a few things that I want us to just get tonight. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. A number of revelations that I want us to have, not just for tonight, but that they become pillars of our spiritual conviction. It matters, please listen, it matters that your conviction is grounded on an exact body of knowledge so that you don't believe this today then believe that tomorrow that vacillation will frustrate your Christian experience the Bible says but without faith please listen it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto God listen carefully it says he must believe that he is everybody say he is so that is the first thing you should believe the first assignment of your faith is not to help you receive. It's to help you comprehend the fact that God is alive. Please understand this. The primary assignment of faith is not to help you receive things. That it takes faith to believe that God is alive. Because sometimes your situations may not allow you see that God is alive. So the Bible says without faith, you cannot please God. Why? Because lack of faith will make you doubt the certainty of his person. Faith. 
it takes faith to believe that God is alive when your situations are saying otherwise it takes faith to believe that God is alive when your life the circumstances around your life negate that thought so it says that he that cometh to God must believe find a way of believing that God is alive then number two that there is a name that he is called he is not just called faithful he is not just called true he is not just called the word there is a name he is called he is called a rewarder a rewarder it's not an attribute it's a name he rewards men he is alive his hand can reach out to men listen very carefully he that cometh to God must believe that God is alive. God is alive. Your attitude will show when you know that God is alive. Your attitude will show when you know that God is alive. In spite of all the things that surround you and in spite of the voice of darkness, I know he's alive. If you do not believe he's alive, then you cannot believe he's a rewarder. That means the, the passion to seek him and seek the manifestation of his word will not be there. Because number one, you do not believe he's alive. It's easy to just chorus it, God, you are alive. Uh -uh. When Jesus was teaching us to pray, listen very carefully. Go to John, I mean Matthew chapter 6, please. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is teaching us to pray. He says, um, let's go to verse... It should be verse 4. Let's start from verse 4. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 4. Okay, 5. Give us 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, that they may be seen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 6. So he says, after this manner. Um, where is it? Okay, that you pray in secret. I think that should be verse 7. I'm looking for what we know theologically to be the Lord's Prayer. That will be 9. Yes, because 10 says thy kingdom come. So that would be 9. After this manner, it didn't say reciting these words. After this manner, I introduced to you a pattern. When you pray, approach prayer this way. Start by saying... Or understanding that the one you are approaching is Abba our father there is a revelation there the word Abba means source sustainer but it also means protector please understand this so that the one I am coming to was not given something to give me he owns it it belongs to him he is source his sustainer and if and when he does give it he has the power to preserve pray after this manner let this be the understanding that constructs your prayer our father abba are we together now he is alive in the heavens then he says give us this day so that father who is alive can give and he can give daily it didn't say it's give us give us this day that means you are fast enough to allow the, the request meet me before the end of the day give me this day there is speed in your giving it's not just that you are a giver please understand this prayer he's not just saying give us uh -uh. you can add time to his giving give us this day even if he gives you this year he's still faithful but God is saying it is within my power to give you today. Please say, give me this day. We know the give me part. But we do not know that you can, your faith can give God a time. Abba Father who art in heaven, give me this day. My daily bread, my daily bread, not my bread. 
my daily bread in your economy there is an allocation for me every day i stand by faith to receive the one for today our father who art in heaven give us this day forget about the other things our father i'm still talking to you i am in need of my daily bread give us this day our daily bread and because i know that when you give me daily bread others will not have bread to eat and it will attract enmity so i ask that you give me my daily bread and then verse 12 look at this verse 12 please and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 13 and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil because every time there is daily bread evil will look for you did you hear what i said every time there is daily bread evil will look for you let me tell you this true success carries a huge price the price of being misunderstood the price of being wished that your testimony becomes corrupted you need to pray and say lord lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil but the part that i want you to get from that lord's prayer is our father in heaven you are a giver so give me but then your faith can allocate time let it be this day every day is your today it says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness today if you hear his voice you can make your today tomorrow and you can make your today today hallelujah so you must understand that god is alive honestly i continue to pray that god will give us our generation a revelation of who he is because we are gradually turning god into a principle i believe in principles but god is not a principle god is not a formula there is a real personality seated right now on a throne There is a real personality. The same way there is a real president now seated in Asso Rock. There is a real person seated. He's not a Christian opinion. Please listen very carefully. He's not a religious opinion. The awareness of who sits on the throne will do something to your situation. I know. That he's seated not standing not worried on the throne because if a man is seated there have been times in the bible when kings were worried they were on the throne but they were not at peace they were worried when jesus was born herod was still on the throne but he was worried but this one the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool God is alive and he rewards Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 the second thing I want you to understand this night Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 I said it earlier on that the Word of God defines the boundaries of his commitment to the believer please understand this God is not committed to you just because you are a Christian no no there is nowhere in Scripture where God's commitment is to Christians God's commitment is to anyone who has value for his word. Please pay attention. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, by the power of his word, by the word of his power. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the word in the beginning the beginning of anything starts with the word in the beginning of my solution the word in the beginning of my miracle the word in the beginning of my turnaround the word 
It says, in the beginning was the word, and that word was with God, and that word was God. Next verse, please, give it to us. It says, he was with God in the beginning, and through him, all things were made by him. And without him, who, the him, word, all things, say all things. All things were made by him. Every meal in this restaurant was made by this chef. All things were made by him. If you ever see anything made, the word of God is the maker of not just men, is the maker of things. The word of God can make a man. All things were made by him. All things, you know, when someone is successful, they say you are made. And you are correct. But the Bible says the maker of men is God made by him and without him that means outside of his influence outside of his creativity was not anything made that was made it is not possible to have anything sustainable outside of his presence and outside of his word are we together yes the word of God is very powerful we must we must have a thorough knowledge about the promises of God. His promises represents his commitment. Please listen. When, when, come. If I give this gentleman a job, please look up. If I give this gentleman a job in a serious company, I usually would give him, can I have a paper? I will give him a letter of employment. Is that true? And usually that letter of employment will state his roles, his responsibility to that company or organization. Are we together? But then contained in it also will be a, a, a rundown of the organization's commitment to him. You will see it written here that you are allowed by that company to have a particular period for your leave that this is the cumulative of your salary is 500,000 but then is broken into this and that and that and that the company will take responsibility for your health insurance etc etc there are terms now if this man is not aware something the company can do he will go and pay for it and waste his money it is important you are aware listen to me the knowledge of God's promises is not for baby Christians the knowledge of God's promises are for receivers if you are ready to receive you must be aware we have this ugly mentality that every time we talk about the promises of God is just for children baby Christians the promises of God represent his oath his commitment his power always responds to his promises. This is what I have decided that I will do. There is a promise in scripture that guarantees for a bright future for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Let me show you how you engage these things. It says there are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring me a future, not a past. A future. God may not bring my past, but he can bring my future. So this is my understanding. To bring me a future and an expected end. If I see what does not look like God, I reject it as my future. I shift it to my past. And I say, Lord, where is my future? Because your word declares... That the end must be an expected one. This is not what I expect. So this cannot be the end. Let me show you how to engage the promises of God. Not just to read like an unintelligent person. No. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. saith the Lord. That they are thoughts of peace. It helps me to know what to fight against and what to leave. Whatever cannot bring peace to my life must not be of God. They are thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace thoughts of peace thoughts of peace not necessarily progress the path may not look like it but your peace will still remain thoughts of peace I use the peace of God to gauge what he's involved in regardless of the results thoughts of peace to bring me an expected end a future 
Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. He was speaking to young Jeremiah. Amplified says, For I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. My reputation is upon that word. And I am alert, I am active, watching over my word to perform it. Are we together? Yes. The Bible tells me that I will be the head and not the tail. It didn't say I will be the head when I'm in America. It didn't say I will be the head when I'm in England. No, it says I am the head. Head everywhere is head everywhere. I am the head. It didn't call it a localized head. It didn't call it a territorial head. It says you are the head and you are not the tail. It says you are above and not beneath. I believe it. I sincerely do. I truly believe it with all my heart. So every time I approach life, I already know my position. I'm not asking life to tell me. I go aware and I insist until it becomes it. Hallelujah. Yes. You can hold on to the promises of God. Please listen to me. You have to understand this. Psalm 112, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. If you are not that man, leave that scripture. But if you are that man, read on. You see that? If you, if you fear the Lord and you delight greatly in his commands, then you read on. The Bible says that, verse 2, his seed. That means he will have seed. This already is a weapon against barrenness. His seed. His seed. You carry your medical report and lift it to God. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. There's no giving birth to dull children. There's no giving birth to children who everybody is helping. No! Has nothing to do with tribal affiliation. Please understand this. If you are too big to engage the world this way, you will never have results in your lifetime. It's a formula that has no exceptions. Hallelujah. His seed shall be mighty, not in heaven, on earth. Upon earth. Then it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. The next verse says wealth and riches. He won't look for them. They will be in his house. There is a state that will attract these possibilities. And yet the Bible says his righteousness will endure forever. The part of the scripture you believe is the part that works for you. Just because you are holding a Bible does not mean it will work. You must believe God is alive. God is alive. His word. You must be aware of his promises. His covenant. I love our little children here. You see them all the time. For some reason, they believe that as Abba, they should not be hungry. Those children never come and ask me, do you have biscuit? As soon as, koinonia starts for them as soon as we share the grace. Now, as far as we're concerned, they're sleeping. This is service for adults. As soon as we share the grace, they wake up and come boldly. And sometimes they ask me to bring down my head. I'm the one who carried my big mouth and said, I am father. So they say, father, bend down. A son wants to talk. And they say, I'm hungry. And I look at the welfare, I say, please bail me out. Their confidence is based on the integrity. You approach God with confidence, not arrogance. Confidence. There is a difference. Confidence. I know. You're my hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. Because you're with me 
Because you're with me. Because you're with me. I will not fear. What can man do to you when God is with you? Because you're with me. I raise that song because God is ministering to someone. Because you're with me Because you're with me I will not fear Listen, the Jesus I saw is a real God When I saw Jesus, the majesty that comes from him Will make you a fool to doubt him majesty you will know that he's a man only because he chose to but this one is not a man he was not no 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 the creator there is something i want the word of god to do to you all this up today you talk like you're a christian tomorrow you talk as if you forgot that you gave your life to christ no but i know whom i have believed and I am persuaded. Persuaded. The invincibility of his counsel, the forcefulness of his word to manipulate life till I win becomes my confidence. Have you seen politicians rig election? You are not supposed to win, but someone interrupts the process. They return the ballot boxes. They stamp it where they should not stamp and declare you a winner. That's exactly how God lifts men. The question is, who writes the rules for him whether he's right or wrong? Based on what parameter do you say God is right or wrong? If I choose to sleep in the parlor, am I wrong? Is it not my house? Listen, when God insists for a man to rise, step out of the way. Because let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you will find every reason why it should not happen. God's idea of justice is not obedience to a law that was put by man. God's idea of justice is the result looking like what he wants. Please, we have to know who God is. Understand this thing about God. That's why his ways look unfair. When you understand God's word, you will know how to engage things. You will know how to change things. The knowledge of his promises. Still under the second point. Then the knowledge of his ways, his methodologies. Please listen to me. Listen to me. This is where many, many of our hardship comes from. This is where most of our pain is derived from. Ignorance. Of his ways we may know his promises but we need to know his methodologies are we together Mike is playing this keyboard based on a formula you come and sit down on this keyboard and you'll be surprised how it will disobey you not because the keyboard was programmed to disobey your ignorance are we together now the potentials of this keyboard is at the mercy of your understanding. Listen, God has methods. Any method is not his method. You have to understand this. The knowledge of God's methodologies is your bailout system out of the wickedness in this life. There is a way he leads men. There is a way he restores. There is a way he turns things around. There is a way he heals. There is a way he honors. You must know. You must know this. There is a way he anoints. 
You have to know the ways of God. There is a way to make God vulnerable. He has vulnerabilities. God has a weak point, if I would use that word. You must know what it is. Ah, it was David that knew this. Oh God, if you kill me now, who will praise you? Who will serve you? And God says, what do I do with this man? What do I do with this man? God gives him an option and he says, God, deal with me by yourself. Don't leave me to my enemies. These people do not have mercy, but I know you. There is one thing I can tell you that will make you change your mind. Just agree that you are the one who will deal with me. Hallelujah. There are things that if you know about God and his ways... Your life will look terribly unfair. God. We must know his ways. There is a way he prospers. And this is one of the major reasons why many of us are here. This issue of the blessings of the Lord. The sting is getting harder by the day. And we must be honest to say, Lord, there has to be a way. Abba, there has to be a way. The cost of looking for money is not for the saints. To, for a man to spend his whole life, we call it making ends meet. It's not a good theology. It's a terrible way of walking. You will never be... It takes time to know God. It takes time to impact a generation. And that time can be occupied looking for money. It's a cost. You have to know God's methodologies. Please listen to this. And in the kingdom, you don't measure wealth by the quality of the clothes you wear and the shoes. How much can you give to the kingdom without it affecting you? That's the measure of your wealth. Not, not what I have. I can take a flight here. I can wear one shoe, one cloth. No. No. Is God helping us tonight? I told you that the miracle service starts from the word. The word is powerful. It constructs your understanding. So that whatever you receive will stay. The knowledge of his ways. I've spent my life like a spiritual archaeologist. Searching for the ways of God. It's risky to live your life based on opinions. It's risky to live your life hoping you are right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It is the end that shows you that you are wrong. There is a way to do ministry and get results. There is a way to do ministry and rubbish, rubbish yourself. Begging everywhere for money, conniving, telling lies, prophesying nonsense. There is a way to impact a generation. There is a methodology for influence that has nothing to do with tribal advantage. Believe me when I say this. When you find it, it will show you have found it. The ways of God. The Bible says he made known to Moses his ways. It is a blessing when God shows you his ways. Some of us are here today. The real miracle that you need to receive is the miracle of understanding. You may not be sick, but it looks like I keep trying. I knock this door, it does not open. I knock that door, it does not open. Here's what the Bible says. Walk ye circumspectly, accurately, as wise, not as unwise, redeeming the time. How do you redeem the time? By being wise, circumspectly. That means minimize trial and error in your life. The time it takes to correct mistakes is too long. So make sure you get it once as much as possible. It's a way to redeem time. Is God speaking to us? Let me end by just teaching briefly on something I wrote here. How blessings manifest. Write it down. I just, I just, I came with, with, with a burden in my heart. Listen, believers, 
the, the fivefold or fourfold as you want to call it, was designed to bring the body, not just to receive miracles, but to bring us to a point of accuracy. There are things in your faith life at a level that should not be concerned again because the key that opens that door and keeps it open has been delivered to you. Are we together? How blessings manifest. First John or John 1 14. John chapter 1, the gospel of John, the first verse, the first chapter, the 14th verse. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh. Let's read it together. One, two, read. And the word was made flesh. Stop there. Read it one more time. And the word was made flesh. Let's continue. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. So the word can become flesh. The word flesh there means it found expression in our realm. The word can have a material equivalent. The word can come as health manifested. The word can come as lifting manifested. Please hear me. The word does not just remain in the realm of the spirit. The word can and should become flesh. It didn't say the word became a human body. <clears throat> the word became flesh. It's a principle. But there is a technology. The word becoming flesh. The word in the realm of the spirit may not profit you in this realm. You need it to become flesh. Then you will behold the glory. Revelations 22. Verse 17. Shabarus kabaladusia. And the spirit and the bride say, And let him that hear it say, come. Hmm. And the spirit and the bride say, come. The spirit and the bride in this case, who is the man of God, says, come. Then the one they spoke to who hears will agree and say, come. Follow me. The spirit and the bride say, be healed. The one in need of the healing hears the spirit and the bride saying, be healed and agrees. Be healed. The word becoming flesh. I'm showing you the technology. The spirit and the bride say, rise. That means when a man is speaking, he's not speaking alone. He's standing as a bride. But there is the spirit. But the hearer must also say what the spirit said the spirit and the bride say let it be over the hearer who came for koinonia hears the spirit and the bride say be over and he repeats it is over that echo is what this is the same thing that happened in ezekiel chapter 37 when you turn there the spirit listen very carefully spoke just because there was no one there that you see does not mean no one repeated it the spirit and the bride so the lord brings a word and says that yoke is over you receive it and say this yoke is over so says the spirit and so says the bride Do you believe what I'm telling you? And then you will marvel and wonder at how things begin to change. He says, and there was a, a sound. A sound and bones. Now imagine if Ezekiel had to search for the bones one by one. No. There is ease when you understand the ways of God. Just agree with the spirit and the bride and commit God's integrity. The bones will find themselves. Were they not created in the first place? The spirit and the bride. So the Lord says, hear me, it's time to rise. And the spirit and this bride of his says, come. And you believe it. And you also say, come. Because you are the one that has heard. You hear that word. They heard the word. 
but the word did not profit them. Where did the word come from? From the spirit and the bride. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hearing has a lot to do with your receiving. You must hear. It's good to see, but you must also hear. And you must participate in the result as proof that you believe. Are we together? Now, let me tell you the three main ways that God's blessings, the general technologies that the spirit and the bride comes, but all our solutions, please listen, all the solutions we search for come in only three dimensions. Number one, Every solution that you seek, including that which you seek tonight, will come by the ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. You can put there the supernatural. There are dimensions of the workings of God that require the supernatural straight up. Like the healing of infirmity. Someone is here now, for instance, maybe with cancer. Or maybe a problem you don't need any counseling there's no counseling there you need the supernatural someone is here and things you know you need the hand of God directly is the first way that the word becomes flesh so that what is not suddenly becomes ah, and what is suddenly leaves just like that amazing miracle amazing miracle a womb that is not becomes immediately. A womb that cannot receive child, cannot receive seed, becomes. Yesterday, I was ministering in Abuja and I was so touched when a woman walked up to me and said, Apostle, you were here a few years ago and you ministered to me and you prophesied um, that I would get married and I will have a child and then... I had a miscarriage the first time and I felt so bad. And when you returned, you prophesied that you have a baby girl. This is the baby girl. When I held that child, I was not holding a child. I was holding the word that has become flesh. That you may come here trusting God to increase your ministry and expand the reach, expand the demand upon your grace. There may be things to learn, but in the final analysis, there is a level of fire and grace that must rest upon you. And you will return back and marvel and wonder. It will look like you held a charm and put it in your pocket. What manner of the workings of the spirit is this? Please believe the supernatural. The supernatural is not for Pentecostals. If you do not believe the supernatural, you, your life will be in trouble. It will be a compendium of pain. God can invade time and manipulate things. The anointing is the agency that he has allocated. Medicine has given us a glimpse of the way the anointing works. Watch this. If I have a boil, we have a lot of doctors here. If I have a boil and my leg is swollen, sometimes they may not need to do anything to the boil exactly. They will just give me a few drugs with a dosage and say, swallow it. Is that correct? And while I'm swallowing it, I don't speak to the drug and say, drug, please. Make sure you don't go to my brain by mistake. This is where, no, no. Designed in that drug is the ability to find what is wrong. Once you swallow it, once it enters your system, it becomes compatible with all your organs. Your organs begin to align them. Ah, God. And you will watch something within days start going down, going down. Last week when I saw you, your leg was swollen. Where did that mass go to? It vanished. Do you expect God to be that slow? What then is the difference between him and medicine? Medicine is, is a fragrance of his mercy reaching earth. Like, like I, 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 I wear perfume and when I pass, whatever your nose can receive, you enjoy it for that moment. 
But what if I gave you the bottle? No, no, no. Please, I don't downplay medicine. But I want you to understand this. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe lives can change. I believe that what is not can become. In the twinkling of an eye, I believe it. Otherwise, we are gathered here for a waste of time. I really believe it. Ah. I believe it. I believe that something that is missing can return back. Everything is alive. I believe. I am a miracle myself. I'm not just a recipient of miracles. I am a miracle. This man that stands before you is a real miracle. So I know that miracles are real. Please don't get used to pain. Don't get used to the tragedies of life. Expect that God can invade this life. Let me tell you a miracle that happened to me. We were in Lagos for young and yielded, and then I ministered. I ministered in the church that we always use their auditorium, and something strange happened. While I was counseling, a man came who, um, of course, I'm sure he could understand English, but he felt comfortable speaking in Yoruba. And he came and sat close to me and started talking in Yoruba, you know, just assume. And now he was an elderly man. This is something that happened last week. I didn't know. I said, now how do I respectfully tell this man, sorry, sir, I'm not exactly Yoruba. And the guy was talking to me. And the next thing that happened was I started understanding exactly what he was saying. This is not a lie. The same way you preach and someone is interpreting. I was hearing what he was saying. Then I was responding to him in English. And then he would tick the first one. Tick the second one. We were done and I prayed for him. Immediately I, w I finished praying for him. That was it. You, I will not be able to hear anything again. Where have you kept God? Oh. Where have you kept God? Where have we reduced the God of heaven to? Please listen, listen, listen. Listen. Man himself is a miracle. Everything happens on earth. It's just that we don't take our time to ponder. I believe in the supernatural. It is the way God reaches men. What is not becomes. That means it is possible for someone who has no business calling you to call you. Why should you wonder? It is the Lord's doing. Let it only be marvelous in your eyes. While you are listening to me, let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Take away the unbelief. Dear ones, take away the unbelief. There is a God that sits in heaven. That God is not a man. God is not an archangel. God is not Angel Michael. He's not a senior brother to the angels. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Are we together? The supernatural a generation that does not believe the supernatural is the generation that will truly miss God experientially Hi. we need to trust God for grace this is one of the benefits of things like praying in the spirit to take you out of this mundane realm of carnality where we always we believe that things must happen by science alone no sir there is a God in heaven. By this time tomorrow, there is a God in heaven. The rod of Aaron that did not have a root to the earth can still bring forth fruit. It is true. These have been my contemplation, so not just today. It's been in my heart. You can, you can see the passion with which I'm communicating. A generation is losing the essence of the reality of the power of God.
the ministry of the anointing is gradually being lost. And when I say the ministry of the anointing, I'm not talking of flying up and down, falling down. The ability to demonstrate the existence of God who sits in the heaven. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or a prophet. It's how far God can reach to men. For I spoke a word. You speak. You have been so, so good to me. I don't know the song, but I like the song. part of the song I love. is a demonstration of God's love he knows that you already got born again at 40 when will you know God to become great already you are late you are late already so the dimension of his supernatural can bring mercy can bring favor jump and accelerate your life and push you forward otherwise why is he God please believe what I'm saying God knows that he called you into ministry and he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart that until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a sermon. No. How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? power of God. Let us be a generation that can believe the power of God. That when God says I can lift you, you believe it. When God says I can anoint you, you believe it. When God says I can turn your life around, you believe it. Please hear me. What more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm? You have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs, you will not believe. Jesus himself said it. Except you see it. There is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel I'm aware that some of us have been here, right? A number of people that I ministered to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor, you're the one who came from Ukraine? From Ukraine, all the way. For heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Oh, the overwhelming never
tell you, one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick. There are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache, but it's not headache. It's like chest pain, but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma, but it's not asthma. It's like a lump, but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two, how blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies, this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. Shadow you and light up, mountain you will climb up, coming out to me. and then we'll pray the third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men 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 Men are God's conduits 
they communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation. The word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things. Then the word becomes flesh when men are introduced in your life. Men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life. Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit providing illumination will channel you to solve but there are things that men 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 given by god listen when the man at get beautiful met peter and john he didn't say such as in is in heaven he said such as i have there are things men have please hear me there are things that men have and they can give it there are things that men have and they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have, but you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, he will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. The rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I 
I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please. I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave your seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray. And I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter. And the Holy Spirit told me, you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare, that in the name of Jesus, 
at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men, be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now 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 I command closed doors be open closed doors be open right now be open closed by the hand of darkness I declare be open be open now be open now be open now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh is showing me chains over people's heads I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now! Be loose now! In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years there is nothing you do in time that moves you forward in the name of Jesus I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs I'm about to pray that prayer anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the spirit I declare that limitation broken now broken now help them broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ali Baruza Sikete Balanda Katosh. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed. By the authority of heaven, I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried, let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. 
I tell you the anointing of God is coming on people whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones I declare again womb be open now be open now be open now Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied. Like a chain around the feet of people. Right now I decree and declare. Every chain. Makatos kabarakata holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now 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 hallelujah if you have any abdominal pain lay your hands right now lay your hands just on your stomach any kind of abdominal pain doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid doesn't matter whatever just lay your hands here right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now the anointing of the holy ghost is coming upon your stomach area and in the name of jesus let there be a miracle right now let there be a miracle right now I'm seeing a number in the realm of the spirit 21 and the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people and that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare... I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One, two, three, go. Go now. Every strange spirit. Go now. Go now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty.
Janet. I'm hearing a name, Janet. Hold on. Please don't, don't be rowdy. Just relax. Stand up, my dear. That lady on green, stand up. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady just where this, my brothers, are standing. Bring that person. Just this row. I'm seeing a cloud. Just right here. Right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. It's a lady. Bring her. Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State. Benway State. Benway State. I curse the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory. That is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh.
Who is Agnes? I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take our time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing, just like fire. Three families, three families by the Spirit of the living God. Agnes, who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes, your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hi. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the Spirit of the... There is no hiding place in the name of Jesus. There is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness. I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold that there. I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this road. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this road, like this, this road right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. I set you free, my dear. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone. But there is a woman here, don't be embarrassed, you just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please? There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. 
don't be embarrassed huh? because that's the same way you will come here and testify listen God is not going to embarrass you for nothing are we together listen let me tell you this this is one big family and we're intelligent people we will never come and just embarrass someone like that if there's anything that looks embarrassing just know that these things um, are spiritual my dear that young lady going come lift your hands God is not done with you yet huh this is this is you would have left this girl now she would have probably just gone like that uh, in the name of Jesus Christ I declare take what you put in her dream life let it live now take what you put inside her through the dream miscarriage please come please don't feel embarrassed this is a family did I pray for you did I pray for you it's all right if I've prayed for you just go back my dear put your hand on your stomach in the name of Jesus I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit go and return with your child according to the time of life no more miscarriage whatsoever in the name of Jesus you will return with child according to the time of life in the name of Jesus Christ madam please place your hand in the name of Jesus return with child return with child in the name of Jesus there is someone here you are in ministry I've not done the impartation yet but I'm seeing an anointing come on you and this is for your ministry there is a level of expansion that you have been praying for and God is about to answer that prayer I stretch my hands I don't know where that person is but in the name that is above all names may that anointing like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus there's someone here God this night is giving you a ministry to teenagers an anointing is coming on you your ministry will be to teenagers I don't know where that person is but Lord I stretch my hands right now may that man to find the person in the name of Jesus I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. According to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for. And she should respect a miracle in the name of Jesus I declare you're standing in for her but I declare the power of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession no I know that is it's a it's a grace we will all desire but there are four exact people four exact people some inside some outside lord i don't know where they are but that grace a dimension of the intercessory ministry capacity to travail by the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah why is she here Where are you from? Kaduna, how long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Yes, sir. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Yes, sir. Because
because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Um, Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ejibu. There is a grace. Please hear me. What? What? Where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions, a lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down, your life will change. Amen. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life. Because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes, and you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Come.
Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why by the life here? Who is sick? Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, <laughs> you're going to start having what looks like a growth. <laughs> and it will later become cancer. Ah, because I'm looking at this woman. Jesus. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. Yes, no. Sir. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adamawa to... I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh, you just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a laundry. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, guy, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zakaria. His name is Zakaria. Yes, he's the presenting. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member, and yet he's doing. Now I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship, and just of a sudden. He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody. Huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to wash him clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? 
English, how to speak anyone. The Bible visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, he is. You have female children. I have two. And you but want I a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. <laughs> I want one. God will change me. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, otherwise you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you. Than to antagonize your wife or husband there is a culture of the kingdom listen when we get born again the values the value system of the kingdom the spirit life must be at work in us in as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children male and female when our people are getting married I pray for them that God will give them children male and female but you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say give me male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think I Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he leads upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Yes. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male yes, child. Yes. I want you to believe it. Yes, yes. You believe that? Yes. Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman. In the name of Jesus, let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again. And he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay, sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yes. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. Yes. This is your husband. Yes. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please, reduce public life, watching football, going for marriages that you don't have any business to. I'm not saying you should not honor people, but the times that we're living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine 
that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you? I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, he, now, I, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this, mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back with the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here the moment you start a relationship with a guy. He becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage it must scatter you continue to enter relationships relationships loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the god of heaven let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you will never settle maritally. But you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage. out of And, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming? 
Why is she coming out? The, the family is. She just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she, she, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. Thank you. My dear, hold my hand. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. 
all the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who have prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer, but particularly if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue and we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer request? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them and let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay. Okay, there is, there is overflow two B. Then there is overflow four. Please listen. This is overflow one. This is overflow two. There is overflow to B from this place right to the roadside, second equa down. Then there's overflow four, just from the gate of overflow three. Then we have overflow three in the main building. And then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time 
to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name that is above all names, there are, hold on please, there are people here this is a death sentence. There are people here. This is an impossible situation. There are people here. God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray what looks impossible. I bow my knees to the God of heaven. The one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month, you return here rejoicing. Please, don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual, but is a pattern that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of jesus christ there are situations here that need the blood i declare by the mystery of the blood there are three that bear witness in the heavens the father the word and the spirit there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here. We put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here webbed in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. 
I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed. In the name of Jesus, please believe. Let your, don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you, and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life. Please receive this one. In the name that is above all names, may that mantle like a cloak. Zakata pakatos. Ke preke tos kabaruta. E preke te kotosho pakata. Kratosho tes kabarata. Take favor. Take favor. Carry favor. Carry favor. In the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him the things that must be done through your hands in this season for it to be said this is the Lord's doing 
as you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms. Let there be fire on your altar. Fire on your altar. Fire on the ministration. Let the gifts of the Spirit work powerfully. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. Bringing many families to their knees. Distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money, what to eat, what to wear, house rent, building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice, trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity, that will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire. No room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the word, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you. The unction to stay. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated. There are some of you now. Listen. There are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely. There are dimensions of power. There are haziness. Certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now. But it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. Listen, everything in your life that has refused to grow, God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now.
Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast, they will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here, that death is looming around the corridors of your life or your loved ones or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline I declare let death lose its grip over you now receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused. Looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dally. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly.
quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely, Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven the Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
um, I, I know I welcome everybody. We are going to welcome the first timers now, but particularly I just want to honor a few people first. I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place. And um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to, to do that honor. And I think, I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just squeezed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus, every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far, um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes, I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, overflow one, overflow two, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.